Hey, what's up guys? Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids, and today we're gonna to be talking about my EDC backup system. So for an everyday carry backup system, what I've done is put a bunch of gear in this Maxpedition pouch, and then I keep this in my car. So I've got one set up in one car and another one in another car in case, let's say one day I go out and I forget a knife or I forget a flashlight. Well, I've got my backup system so I can always grab one of those even if I left the house without it. The other thing that happens to me occasionally is I think, you know, my flashlight's all geared up. I, I leave the house and at some point during the day I find out, ah, the battery's dead. Well, now I've got a backup here. So what we're gonna do is actually look at the pouch, then we'll look at the items in the pouch. I wanna let you know that Optics Planet helped make this video possible. So any of the gear you see in the pouch, and the pouch as well, as well as a lot of other outdoor survival, tactical, everyday carry gear is available at their website. So I've put links down below to all these items, and then you can also head over to their website and browse to see if there's anything you might wanna pick up to put in your everyday carry backup system. As far as our pouch, we have the Maxpedition EDC Organizer pouch. This is gonna run you uh, around $20. There's a couple different color options, so a little under uh, $20 to a little over $20, depending on what you get. So you can see we've got hook and loop here on the front if you wanna put a patch. That's, you could put a morale patch, but you also put, you know, if you had a med kit in here, like, you know, first aid or med or something like that. You've got this mesh section on the front that you can actually put stuff in and still see with a little hook and loop there to, um, to keep it shut. Quality pull tabs, quality zippers, handle here just to grab it and then a bunch of webbing options here if you want to actually attach it to gear i guess you could attach it to a vest or something like that if you really wanted to but um yeah i like this pouch you know max Edition makes good stuff and it's very reasonably priced for i think uh, what you're getting as far as quality let's take a look inside to see what actually the rest of the organization looks like inside the pouch what we have are a bunch of pockets and all this material here and all this material here is made of um, a kind of an elastic material so it stretches you've got one two three what I'm calling medium sized um, you know, slots here. Then you've got one, two, three, four, five, six of your small size. Over on this side, you have the large size slots here. And then a couple more of the medium, medium ones here across the front. So lots of ways to store gear, organize gear. You've also got one of those elastic straps right here as well. So you could put something down there. You do have a lanyard here and then also a piece of paracord to uh, attach gear to. You've got a full pocket behind all this, these straps. And then over on this side, you've got a zipper pocket, which as you would assume, runs the full way in here. And then you've got all those elastic straps as well. So lots of, lots of ways, lots of places to uh, you know, store your gear, organize your gear. Now let's actually show you what I put in my kit. What I keep in this front pouch right here is a Right in the Rain Universal Pad. This is actually a sample that I got at SHOT Show. I got some of these ready for giveaway, so stay tuned for that. But uh, Optics Planet carries a lot of different options of these types of notepads. I just love to have one of these with me in case I gotta take notes or something. Um, you can see this one's kind of beat up. The Right in the Rain ones do take, you know, they do take uh, being used pretty aggressively, I guess I could say. Aggressively is kind of a strong word for a notepad. But anyhow, you could put them in your back pocket. You could sit on them. They don't tear. They don't rip. They stay in good shape. Um, and this one I just keep right here in the front pouch. So I'll put links down to a bunch of right in the rain options and similar style things like this uh, in the description box below so you can check those out. First up here, I want to talk about two pens. So this, uh, this first one is the SC Pen. And this is in black, and this is from Schrade. Very simple, it's gonna run you around $23. So take the uh, cap off, put it on like that. It doesn't uh, have any threads to actually lock in, but it does seem quite stable, even more stable than some other, uh, some other higher end tactical pens I've used. Very functional as a pen, and then certainly when you have this on and it does thread down, you could certainly use this as a uh, attention getting item. So uh, yeah, I mean you can use this for self-defense in kind of a Kubaton style fashion. This is gonna run you around $23. We've got another one here from Schrade. This is the SC Pen 4BK. And it basically it's a survival pen. So you take the cap off here. Obviously you got your pen there. And then this is actually a whistle. So you can listen to that. <whistles> Extremely loud. Every time I do it, it hurts my ears. Um, so you got that. You can see this is a little beat up. I'll show you the fire steel, which is on the other end. Uh, the knife, uh, the sorry, the pen does come with a striker, but sometimes I actually use the side of the pocket clip as the striker. There's your fire steel, which you can definitely see I've used before. And then down here on this end, there's actually a small striker for the fire steel as well. So a couple different ways to uh, use your fire steel to get that fire going. This goes back on. And the other thing I like about this pen is that when you take the cap off, it does actually, it's got threads here, so this will screw it on there. And it is still quite usable as a pen. Sometimes tactical pens are just uncomfortable. This one I find comfortable. Uh, this one over here I find even more comfortable as far as just like everyday use for a pen that is also, uh, you know, kind of a tactical pen. 
So those are two pens that I keep in my EDC backup system. Our first knife in the system is the Cold Steel Tough Light, and you can see that thing is well polished. I mean, look at that. Just kind of washes out there in the little bit of sun that we even have today. So there's the Tough Light, and then there's also the Mini Tough Light. So if you want something a little bit smaller, you can get that. Um, it can, you can get it with a plain edge, also with serrations. This one's going to run you around $25 up to around $39, uh, depending on what version you get. So they have different colors and such, so you can check that out. Uh, 2.75. 2.75 inches of a blade there, six inches overall, OS 8 steel, super ergonomic. That's the thing that always jumped out to me about this. Like you put it in your hand, you're like, yep, that works. Got this back lock here, a little bit of um, non-aggressive jimping there, and then also on the lock as well, slot for a lanyard. I've used this, uh, this knife quite a bit and uh, just been really happy with it. I like to mix up my EDC just to test out different things, but this is one that I continually come back to. So uh, Cold Steel Tough Light, and like I said, they also have the Mini as well. You can swap around your pocket clip to uh, either side, but either way, it's gonna be tip down carry. So this one I have, I have like a lot, Cold Steel Tough Light. Let's talk about a flashlight here. Classic, classic one from Everyday Carry. This is the Streamlight MicroStream. It's going to run you around 18 bucks, and uh, it's going to give you 35 lumens. Runs off one AAA. Um, I've used this in a ton of different settings, applications, and it just works. Uh, one thing I like about this, and I'll also talk about this Surefire in a second, but the reflector seems to just give you a really nice beam. So a hotter center slightly, but it's not like it's burning hot, and then the rest of it's really dull. Just the, the way the reflector works, um, it's just it, it's a great light for everyday carry. Very small. I often wear this when I have to wear a suit or get dressed up. You can see we do have the pocket clip that bends back as well, so you can put that on a baseball hat. And it's not super long, so it's not like it's bumping into your forehead when you have it on a baseball hat. You can go momentary on, and then you can certainly click it in. One thing I do like about this pressure switch is it takes a little bit of English. You got to really push down on it so you're not going to accidentally bump it and then have it um, have it stay on. One thing that is good about AAAs, AA's is that they're usually accessible. So, uh, you know, CR123s, 18650s, if your battery dies and you don't have your charger with you, not a lot of people are carrying those around, but you could swap out somebody else's, you know, AAA battery into this if you really needed a uh, really needed a battery and very reasonably priced. If you like the larger version, basically it's the uh, Streamlight Stylus Pro. Not the exact same thing as this, but you know the pen light kind of size of something like this. And uh, Optics Planet sells that as well, and that is a very nice, uh, a very nice flashlight as well. Our next light here is the Surefire Titan. Now I will tell you that there's the Titan and there's also the Titan Plus. Very similar in size. Your functionality in this one is going to give you two different outputs. So that's 15 and 125 as far as your lumens. And then the Titan Plus has three different options. It's going to give you up to 300 lumens. This one's going to run you around 60 bucks, and the other one's going to run you around 90 dollars. Got a little keychain ring there, so you can put it on a keychain easily. Just a simple twist to turn it on. It's going to give you the two different settings. So there's your doesn't really make a difference in the daylight, but there's your low and then there's your higher setting. So like I mentioned about the Streamlight, one thing I, I think probably Surefire, they're well known for being used by law enforcement and military. I'm not sure the Titan is one of those go-to things for either law enforcement or military, but nonetheless, uh, the thing I love about Surefire is the reflector inside. I just find that it gives you a nice, a nice uh, light that comes out, the beam comes out. So you do have a hotter center, but it's not burning hot. And then, you know, your flood is not totally dead. So really, really nice light. Um, for some people, this is just gonna be way out of the price range. For some folks want to invest the money. They say, I want to have a really good EDC light or a keychain light that's gonna work when I need it to work. And this is certainly one of those. This also does come with the AAA nickel metal hydride battery um, that's rechargeable in the, uh, in the light already. So that's a plus, you don't have to, um, you know, you're not looking for batteries. It can take a AAA if this, this battery dies out, but also you've got a rechargeable battery. So that, that's a, a nice feature of the Titan as well. Again, for some people, the price is gonna be so high that they're gonna say, yeah, if I'm gonna buy that, I'm gonna run that as an everyday carry light all the time, not in my backup system, and more power to you. I think you'll be happy with the uh, Surefire Titan. Our next knife is kind of a classic as far as everyday carry knives. This is the Kershaw Skyline. So just over a three inch blade, about seven and uh, a quarter inches long from end to end when it's fully open. So you're talking about, you know, right around a four inch uh, handle, very lightweight. And uh, you've got Sandvik steel on this. This is, this is a great knife overall for everyday carry. Um, and a lot of people have liked this. So they've actually made different versions of it. So you can actually even get it with a Damascus uh, steel as well. Um, this, when I first got this knife, I was like, all right, let's see if, you know, it's, it lives up to all the hype. And it does. It's for what you're paying, which is around $42. I think you're getting an excellent everyday carry knife that's not sending you up to $90 or $100 or, you know, way over that 
for your um, for your knife. So this one I would certainly recommend. And um, yeah, I mean, what else can I say? Lightweight, good steel. I like the style of the blade. You got a thumb stud. You've got the flipper there. Um, G10 handles, pocket clip. You can see there's one setting, two settings for your uh, for your pocket clip. So it's going to be tip up or tip down, but that's definitely right hand carry only. Uh, but I'd encourage you to check out some other reviews on this knife as well, um, just because a lot, a lot of people have liked it. And once I finally got one, I thought, oh, now I actually see why they like it. So Kershaw Skyline has a good backup option here within my system. Our last knife that we have here is the Spyderco Persistence. 2.75 inches for your blade, 6.8 from end to end. G10 on the handles. Your steel on this is 8CR13MOV. Uh, the bigger brother to this is the Tenacious, which is also carried by Optics Planet. So if you like this, but you want something a little bit bigger, you could certainly uh, pick up the Tenacious instead. Uh, full flat grind on that. You can see, I mean, that is definitely reflecting in the sun that just came out. And um, yeah, I like this. This is one of those flicking blades for me. So when I carry it, I'm always messing around with it. Uh, four options for your pocket clip, which uh, it's not super deep, but it runs, I would say, decently, uh, decently deep. If you're just getting into knives or just getting into Spyderco, I think this is a great first step. This or the Tenacious are two great options when it comes to, you know, testing out Spyderco to see if you like their style, the full flat grind, the spidey hole, the whole nine yards. So for around $40, this is a, a good entry level option. And again, another option when it comes to knives within my EDC backup system. You can see here that there's not a lot of multi-tools. I do have this Leatherman Wingman, which we're going to talk about right now. Um, I'm generally not a multi-tool guy as part of my everyday carry system on my person. It's usually uh, in my EDC bag. But all that to say, um, the Leather Leatherman Wingman is a great option. It's uh, inexpensive. It's going to cost you around $35. So if you're not sure you want to get into multi-tools, this is a good way to check it out. But you're getting a great multi-tool for that price. And it's from Leatherman. They make the best stuff out there when it comes to multi-tools, in my opinion, and probably in a lot of people's opinions. So um, for me, a big deal on multi-tools is that you have spring-loaded pliers. Those are nice and thin at the tip of the pliers, too, which is a uh, definitely a plus. Pocket clip on that. So if you want to actually carry it in your pocket, you can do that all day long. Lots of different tools. Um, in this one, like I showed you the pliers, let me show you over on this side. Do have a partially serrated blade there. And then over here, we have, let me take these out, a very nice size pair of, uh, of shears or scissors. Sometimes you get these tiny little dinky ones that aren't worth much, but these ones are actually a quite a good size and work quite well. And then you've got your release to, uh, to close them up. And then you've also got a bunch of, you know, screwdrivers, you got a flathead, Phillips head, You've got a can opener, bottle opener. You've got this little item here actually to cut, cut open clamshell packaging, which that lets it that little blade is for. And then over here on this side, I'll show you real quick. Flathead and Phillips head screwdriver. So there's not, you know, 500 different items within, the, within this Leatherman, but everything that I need in general day to day, um, this, is, uh, this is a good option to go. They do have a $44 option, which is the Leatherman Wingman gift set. And you can check that out if you're interested in, uh, you know, gifting this to somebody. Okay, last up here is the Phoenix E12 flashlight. Uh, no pocket clip on this. That's just going to drop into your pocket or into your uh, into your pack. Up to 130 lumens for this one. On their website, they say that this has two outputs. Uh, in my experience, from having used it, it has three up to 130 lumen output. So double check on that. Uh, if you want to purchase one of these to make sure you're getting exactly what you want. The other thing I'll tell you is that the uh, the E12 ones runs off one AA battery. So again, batteries that are easy to find, commonplace. You don't have to be digging around for them a ton. Uh, simple, simple light. Uh, it is nicely made. I have dropped this and you know kicked it, whatever. Uh, I beat it up a bit and it's still uh, working quite well. Recessed um, pressure switch there, so you're not going to accidentally bump that too easily. And these two little uh, sections of metal on the end are flattened out, so you can actually tail stand this. It does come with a lanyard. I don't ever use a lanyard, uh, but you could certainly do that if you want to. So Phoenix E12 run you about 24 bucks and change. All right, let me tell you the irony of doing this video today. So it's Friday and my weekend is Friday, Saturday because I work Sunday since I'm a pastor. So Friday, Saturday is our weekend and what we do for Friday is my wife takes kind of the morning time to herself and I take the afternoon time to myself. She's with the kids all week so it gives her a break. I get to spend some time with the kids and then we kind of all reconvene in the evening. All right, that said, I was thinking about her coming home and me grabbing some gear and getting out into the woods and stuff and I forgot to put on my knife and my flashlight. So. I reached into my EDC backup system, which I am finishing the video on right now. And now I'm carrying what I have, my Streamlight MicroStream 
and then my cold steel tough light on me. So just kind of, you know, proof in the pudding right there that sometimes you forget because you're running out of the house, but now I've got my EDC backup system, so I'm good to go. All right, let's hear about your thoughts, both on this system and also what do you carry? Do you have an EDC backup system? How do you set it up? How do you organize it? Let's get the discussion started down in the comments section. And once again, uh, thanks to Optics Planet for helping out with this video and a reminder that all the gear here, as well as lots of other gear is available if you use the links down below uh, to head over to Optics Planet. Thanks for checking out this video. More videos coming soon. Take care.